Okay, so here we have the Bitolino board. It's a hardware toolkit designed to collect body signals. And this board specifically can collect three different body signals, uh, despite having six uh, blocks right here. Um, the three that it does collect is the ECG, the EMG, and the EDA. Uh, the other two are environmental, so the accelerometer, and the luminance detector. The final one, the LED, is actually for um, the user. Uh, but I'll get back to all of them quick, very shortly and in more detail. So first off, let's look at the uh, center right here. This is basically the power block, the Bluetooth tr data transmitter, and the processor. Uh, the power block is a pretty simple um, unit that just connects to the back battery here and supplies power to the entire unit. Uh, let's turn it on and change. So when it's on and in standby mode, it'll blink right here with, in white uh, relatively slowly. Uh, when it's actually collecting live data, however, it'll blink a lot more rapidly. Uh, pretty easy if, if you're trained to notice the light. Uh, right here we have the Bluetooth transmitter. Um, data that is collected through these channels or sensors will be output through the Bluetooth device to a, a computer uh, within you know, a software such as their own open signals or an API like MATLAB. Uh, finally, up on this, in the center we have the microprocessor. Uh, this, this just receives the data and then outputs it as readable information for us in later use. Uh, quickly going to the back, we see again the battery pack right here, but um, these pieces all have associated A values to it. So if you look closely, we have A3 up here. A4, A1, A2, and A5. Um, these A values actually correspond to uh, what you would be using, looking at for uh, the software on the computer because uh, when you're referencing which channel or which sensor you want to use, you need to correctly pair it up on the computer so it's collecting from the right channel or sensor. And uh, a tricky thing about this actually is sometimes uh, the A values don't actually match up with um, what's displayed on the software, so you have to guess and check in case um, it isn't completely matching up. Okay, now uh, looking more into detail, these actual pieces, uh, the ECG collects heart rate data. Um, and outputs it in a basic 2D graph. It shows the uh, classic QRS complex. Uh, the EMG collects muscle activity uh, that just that would appear on the skin, and then the EDA collects uh, skin activity, skin conductance, I believe. Now, um, these last three are uh, more specific to the environment. So the accelerometer uh, uses a 3D gyroscope to detect acceleration in all the axes. The luminance detector collects ambient light from the surrounding area, uh, just so how much uh, light that's coming in and hitting the actual uh, sensor. And then finally, the LED, which serves almost no purpose other than uh, to turn on and off which is actually pretty helpful when it comes to data collection because um, it's, it's another indicator to indicate whether or not the device is on or off. You know, you could use it for uh, any, uh, just about anything you want. It's probably most useful to, uh, for people who want to collect data and then have an indicator saying, oh, it's on and currently collecting. 
Okay, so now looking at the ECG specifically, um, the way to put it on is actually through use by using this cord right here uh, with the three prongs, as you can see, and this diagram right here. Um, the electrodes will be placed on the body using these stickers right here, these electrodes that are actually just uh, gel, pre-gelled, uh, electrodes that you stick onto the body. The one tricky thing about um, putting on the electrodes is that the placement on the body is extremely important because if these three K cords are not placed cor at the exact uh, or correct location on here, then it will actually produce incorrect information. The graph, um, the actual ECG data will not look like the classic QRS um, heartbeat data. So, uh, looking specifically at the middle one right here, if you look closely, uh, you can see the three cables. So the middle one corresponds to the top of the triangle right here, so I. I is the center one, and then the right side is J, corresponds to the right side of uh, the three. And the left side, K, corresponds to the left cord on the left side. Uh, it's pretty intuitive when it actually comes to putting it on. So once the electrodes are attached, we want to open up open signals. We can actually use a multitude of APIs such as MATLAB, but in this tutorial we'll be using open signals, which is the software provided by uh, the Bitolino team. So this is once you've opened it, this is the first screen you'll see. We will want to go to acquisition right here and then move to the settings panel if it does not automatically. Uh, this is my this is uh, not my first time using it, so technically everything's already set up, but um, for a first time user, every, the process is the same. You will want to uh, locate a device and then add it to the selected devices right here. So the first thing you would do is you would click the add device and you would search for the Bitolino board. Uh, for your computer to actually detect it, you'll need to first pair it with um, uh, the computer's onboard uh, pairing, Bluetooth pairing software. Uh, the pin for the Billy on board is actually 1, 2, 3, 4, so just enter the pin in and it will be paired correctly. So we from here we select the actual uh, MAC address and then we add it right here. Now normally it would have actually just placed it into the uh, available devices but because we've already done that, it's not going to do it here. So once it's here, we just we would have clicked it. It would have appeared right here, and we can move on. Uh, the next panel is the save uh, path. And you can pretty much choose anywhere you want. I have chosen my own directory. And right here, you have the option to save as a text file or an H5 file. I um, opted for a text file because of its... Um, multifaceted use. Down here we have the sampling frequency. You can sample at predetermined preset values, so 1 hertz, 10 hertz, 100 hertz, and 1000 hertz. For ECG data, you need at least 100 hertz. Otherwise, you won't get any meaningful data. And lastly, we have the channels. Um, if you're using an older board, you might actually have to tinker with these because some of the labeling will be incorrect. Um, so for example, the EMG might actually be the ECG, but it's labeled incorrectly here when you first download open signals. Uh, in our case, it's labeled correctly. Channel 3 is the ECG, and we have the sensor. So moving on, we now can go to begin acquisition. So we go return to the main screen the initial screen that we uh, went to, and we just give it a few seconds to start processing, and now it's actually collecting live data. Uh, as you can see, this is my heart rate in real time, being updated, or being updated live and being collected at 100 hertz. So there's actually 100 samples 
per second. And if you look at the actual board, you can see that it is blinking much more rapidly than before when it was in standby mode. So if we, once we're done collecting, however, we just quickly go to here, click the stop button, and we'll see that the device starts or stops blinking as quickly, and we now know that it has stopped. Here we now have the option to save um, the file with any name we choose, again in the path that we choose. You could use the default one that you had set up already or you can create a new path. Uh, we're not going to save today but uh, that's always an option and when it comes back, when you come back to it, it'll be extremely helpful.